Pull up a deck chair and sit back. Relax. It's time for your favorite cruise hour. You're on board, just cruising. Whether you're dreaming of your first cruise or planning your next one, join Larry Jackson as he explores the magical world of cruising. To launch today's cruise, here's Larry Jackson. Good afternoon. Aloha. A como mai and welcome aboard. I'm Larry Jackson, owner of Cruise Holidays of Vieira, and I'll be your cruise director for this week's edition of our radio magazine that's all about the magical world of travel. Well, welcome back. We're so glad you could join us this afternoon. We've got a great show planned for you today. We've got some uh, news of the world of travel. Uh, we've got a very special announcement coming up for you in, in our second segment, so please stay with us after our first commercial break. I'm joined in the studio this morning by my able, capable, overqualified uh, engineer Bill Mink. I'm looking for that guy that you're saying is overqualified. <laughs> I'm not sure I get to the level of underqualified. Well, if you're not familiar with WMMB radio, some of you are listening on the podcast all over the world. Uh, it's our local radio station here in Melbourne, Florida. And Bill is the host of a morning program uh, that's called Bill Mick Live, appropriately enough. And it airs from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on weekday mornings. Bill uh, engages with lively conversations with some of the same of our local uh, community here. And Sometimes livelier than you might like. <laughs> <laughs> he, ha he has um, he has a taser that he uses on certain uh, callers, and um, mm -hmm. it, it is a lot of fun because it's a great take on what I, I think, Bill, and what the local folks, America, is thinking about, not just what the elite. It is are. a way to get your pulse on the fingers of the community, it really, yeah. and, and that's what I like about this job. Yeah. It, it is so easy. And, and Bill does a great job. He throws the subject out there, and uh, you better stay on it or else you don't get to talk. But uh, That's when the radio taser comes into play, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Bill's here with us today, and, um, and we'll be chatting as we go along. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's uh, look at what the news came across the old computer monitor this week. Uh, a lot of it has to deal with COVID. I'm going to try to keep that as brief as I can because I know you all are very sick about hearing it, but it is impacting the industry, so we need to talk about what's going on. We got an announcement this week that two cruise lines, now these are both luxury cruise lines, Silver Sea and Azamara, uh, Silver Sea is now owned by Royal Caribbean, and Azamara used to be owned by Royal Caribbean and has now been spun off to a private equity group. They announced that starting March 1st on cruises uh, after March 1st, you will have to have the booster as well as the two vaccines or the one Johnson & Johnson and the booster to be able to cruise with them. And this, we try to spot trends here on Just Cruising, and I hope this is not a trend we're going to be uh, dealing with going forward. Uh, a lot of folks said, okay, uh, you know, someone told me the other day, you should have that uh, vaccine card laminated so that it doesn't wear out. And then someone else said, well, no, you got to have a place to put the booster on there. And I said, wait a minute, I'm done, two and done. Uh, uh -huh. I, I'm going to laminate to heck with it. But anyway, now it looks like this might be rearing its ugly head. You, you can get a collection of them, put them on a ring like a key <laughs> ring, right? Here, here's the first one, here's yeah, the second one, here's the third one. I never one. thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's the fifth, the sixth. Don't even, don't know. Uh, Carnival Cruise Lines uh, followed suit, and they said that, uh, that while not requiring the booster, they will follow the CDC if the CDC decides that the booster is required in order to make you fully vaccinated. So again, I hope these are just uh, warning shots. Well, I if, think they're still all trying to figure out what to do. They really are. Oh, they, absolutely. It's like, how do we make them nice to us again? Well, how do we create more cancellations? And, yeah. uh, <laughs> no. I, I talked to one of our uh, cruisers came back from a cruise this week, and um, they were on the Viking Ocean Cruises. And this is a 900-passenger ship. Mm -hmm. They had 147 people on board. Oh, wow. 450 crew members. So they had three crew members for every passenger, which was, <laughs> he said, you go into a bar and the guy said, can you get, what would you like to drink? And he goes, no, no, I just, I'm fine. No, really? Would you like, a, a, how about some water? <laughs> I need something to do. <laughs> so you got to feel for those folks. You oh, really I do. do. Yeah. I do. I mean, you got to wear a mask 24 seven and then there's nobody there, but so it, it's a great time to go cruising. Speaking of which, did you see the weather forecast for this coming weekend? Uh, it's supposed to be a little 
little chilly, yeah. I understand. You yeah. know what Linda and I do when it gets cold in Florida? What? We get on a cruise and go to the Caribbean where it's warm. There so, you go. That's a good <laughs> idea. That's not a bad idea at all. So that's what we're doing uh, uh, this morning. We're going to board the Celebrity Reflection out of Fort Lauderdale, and we're going to cruise down for seven days. Uh, we're going to Belize, which I haven't been to in many, many years, and so I'm excited to see what's going on down there. Mm-hmm. Probably nothing because there's no ships. But Are, are, are these places relatively open? Yeah. Now? Uh, okay. But that could change because a lot of times we get on the boat and we go cruising down. And then just before, uh, back in March of 2020, we actually were inside of the port when they denied us board, um, docking. And so we really? turned around and went back to it. So it can happen at the very You had one moment. of those horrible days at sea. Yeah, yeah I, really no, I really enjoy. hate that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we'll be reporting to you back a uh, week after next about the our cruise on the Celebrity Reflection. I love Celebrity. It's a great cruise line. We have a wonderful time on board them. Well, if you're just joining us on uh, Just Cruising and you haven't listened to us before, let me tell you about the sponsor of our program, and that's Cruise Holidays of Vieira. And we are a boutique travel advisory service that's located in the Suntree, Melbourne area of Florida. But don't let that stop you because we're available to you 24-7 on our webpage. Our phone number is 321-242-1331. And we're available through that phone number 24-7 because we've got a great answering service. And uh, we would love to help you plan your next vacation, whether it be a land tour, whether it be a trip to Hawaii. We are Hawaii destination specialists. We lived in Hawaii for over 25 years. And so we can definitely help you if you would like to go visit the Aloha State. And, of course, cruises. We represent all of the major cruise lines, including river cruises, including expedition cruises, going to Galapagos, Machu Picchu, and things like that. We invite you to give us a call at 321-242-1331. The webpage, justcruisingviera.com, and up in the left-hand corner is our email address, and you can, as they say in the vernacular, shoot us an email, and we'll get back to you and help you plan your trip. So... We're looking forward to being able to do that. Well, here's an article that uh, it's very lengthy, so I'm going to really reduce it down. And this is called, the name of the article is The Great Cruise Comeback in the Florida Caribbean Region. And the reason this article caught my attention was because it had some nice things to say about Governor DeSantis, which we don't see many of those these days. It just depends on who's doing the right. Yeah. <laughs> this person's not even from Florida, so that was kind of interesting. Okay, and they're recounting some of the history of the uh, pandemic shutdown. And they talked about in April of 2021, Governor DeSantis filed a lawsuit against the CDC for what he deemed to be obstructionist regulations, claiming that the test cruises would be prohibitively prohibitively expensive and that vaccine rules were discriminatory to those who did not qualify for vaccinations. Well, he won the lawsuit, went all the way to the Supreme Court, and he won it. Unfortunately, after he won it, all the cruise lines decided they were going to uh, abide by the CDC mandates anyway. So it was, I mean, it was a great effort and turned out. Doesn't to be do somebody any good to fight for you if you don't fight for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And so they all decided they were going to follow. But I, I like this quote, uh, and this is from his press secretary, Christine Pouchard. And she says, Governor DeSantis has been fighting for the cruise industry, arguing against the federal government bureaucracy that singled out the industry for unfair, unscientific, devastating restrictions. The cruise industry is essential to Florida's thriving economy. More than 159,000 people in Florida work in the cruise industry. So uh, we really appreciate what uh, Governor DeSantis did. He's one of the lone voices that stuck up, stood up for our uh, our industry. Had an economy bouncing back before a lot of the country even thought about it. Absolutely. And what he did for land travel was even more dramatic than what he did for the cruise industry because the, the pickup and international arrivals, the, the parks and all that other stuff has been really phenomenal also. Well, and, and Florida is so dependent on those things. Yeah, and So many people say, it's, oh, I got off the airport, took off my mask and didn't have to put it back on again. For, oh, they love that. So. I, I had family coming down saying, do we have to wear a mask here? <laughs> mask? What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, we'll be right back right after this port of call so please don't go anywhere and we're back and so are you and 
let's get started. Well, I told you we were going to have an announcement in this segment, and we are. You might recall the last few shows I've been talking about a special cruise going from here in Port Canaveral to Bermuda. And uh, I told you that Linda and I are going to be escorting this cruise on May 15th, 2022. It'll be eight days uh, going to Nassau, the perfect day at Coco Cay, which is Royal Caribbean's private island. And over the years, we've helped a lot of people plan fundraising cruises. And this is a cruise that uh, we get folks to go on. And either the cruise lines or cruise holidays makes a donation to the nonprofit organization and allows them to raise money. For instance, we, we're we coming up on our 16th year doing the Military Officers Association of Cape Canaveral's scholarship cruises. And during the last 16 years, we've raised over uh, $35,000 for their scholarship fund. Very nice. Just by going on cruises. And the great thing about these, Bill, is that the the passengers don't pay any additional money. It's a, it's a donation that comes from us or from the cruise lines. So when I was looking at this cruise to Bermuda, I was thinking about an organization that uh, we've all seen their ads on television, and I and I believe very much uh, in what they're doing, and that's the Tunnels to Tower organization. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're not familiar with them, um, the Tunnels to Towers organization basically does four things. One is that um, when a first responder or a military person is killed in action and doesn't come home, they will actually pay off the mortgage for the widow and allow her to keep to stay in their home. Uh, for catastrophically injured veterans, they create smart houses that have things like stoves that lower down. Um, and on their commercials, they have there's one fellow who lost both his legs and one arm. And he has a house that allows him to do his own cooking and everything else. It's, it's really cool what they do. The third thing that they're doing is they're offering small houses for homeless veterans. And Tunnels to Tower, uh, basic, and they're creating a village of 110 f- homes down in Lando Lakes, Florida. They Someone donated uh, a bunch of land to them. I heard about that just a couple of weeks ago. That's yeah. a great thing. Yeah, so it's going to be all Uh, very severely. Now, personally, I think this is something the U.S. government should be providing to severely disabled veterans, but it's not happening. So the uh, Tunnels to Tower organization started, um, and the way it got its name is uh, the the fellow that runs it is Frank Siller, and his brother was a fireman in New York City on 9-11. He he got off shifts, went home to Staten Island, Staten Island and heard about the towers being attacked, he put on his fireman's outfit, and because all the tunnels were closed down, he ran through the Holland Tunnel to get to the World Trade Center and then went in and was killed. So that's where the tunnel to towers comes from. Wow. Now, what we're going to do for this cruise, and this will be on Royal Caribbean's Marin of the Seas, May 15th, 2022. For every cabin that we book and that sails, we're going to donate $50 to the Tunnel to Towers uh, Foundation. And uh, I, I wrote to them and I said, hey, we'd like to do something for you guys. And uh, they said, wow, that'd be great. So they're going to allow us to use their logos and uh, help us to promote this. So. That's fantastic. So Tunnel to Towers. Of the Towers, cruises you've been talking about? This is the one that has my interest. I've, I never had any thoughts of going to Bermuda. It's a great place. That's, and and I've got a friend. She's a teacher here locally. Uh-huh. She was one of my kids' teachers in school. And she was raised there. Oh, she's wow. from there. Yeah. And she's talked about it a little bit. And I haven't talked to her for quite a while. But it sounds like a place I want to see. It, it is so unique because it's so British. I mean, they they are their flag. Don't is, change my mind, Larry. <laughs> no, no. It's cool. It's like going to – and you, we were down one day, and the parliament was uh, exiting from one of their sessions. Uh-huh. And all the guys were wearing coats and ties and Bermuda shorts. They really wear Bermuda shorts. That's like uh, Aloha shirt in Hawaii. Or so did my dad, but that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> With the black socks. And, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you knew dad, I see. I see him on the beach here. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> but anyway, so if you would like to join us on the Tunnel to Towers Bermuda Cruise, May 15th through the 23rd, it's going to be on the Marin of the Seas. She's a nice, small, uh, what we call small these days, intimate ship. Please give us a call at Cruise Holidays of the Era, 321 242 one three three one. Now the price of a balcony cabin is going to be one thousand five hundred and fifty dollars per person, fifteen fifty or thirty one hundred dollars for the balcony cabin, and that's going to include your port charges and taxes. 
Um, so please give us a call at Cruz Holidays Oviera, 321-242-1331. Help us to support the Tunnels to Towers uh, or organization. Wonderful bunch of – by the way, I looked them up on the – yeah, they have these websites that, that rate charities. Right. And they, they got a 99% rating. In, in other words, one, $99 out of 100 that they raise actually goes to something. $1 goes to advertising and admin. And there's some organizations out there where it's 60 40, so. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and Rush was big behind this particular yes, charity. Was. And the EIB network still is. They right. still talk about it regularly. So that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, Rush did something really cool was when that tennis shoe, they, did the, they banned it because it had an American flag on it. Uh-huh. Yeah. He created a T-shirt with Betsy Ross's uh, flag on it. It raised $8 million, which he gave to Tunnel to Towers. Isn't that uh, something? That's I mean, amazing. The guy was phenomenal. We're not going to raise $8 million, but we're going to do the best we can. Okay, let's go back to what, uh, what we were talking about, which was um, the news. A lot of folks have been asking us about river cruises in Europe, and they are really not – they are making cruises. They are doing cruises in Europe currently, but it's not very full scale. I got an article this week that says that river cruise lines are hopeful for a normal season in 2022. Now, their seasons over there run from about April through, well, through December for the uh, Christmas market cruises, which is, I mean, Holland in November is not the place I want to be. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be in Florida in January, but. Well, there you go. I, <laughs> although a wintry place around Christmas, I could get into yeah, okay. I could do that for a it, week. It, they have mulled wine and stuff to keep you warm. And uh, mulled wine is for people from West Virginia. It is, doesn't come out of your attic, right? No. <laughs> okay. they, it's, it's wine that comes out of the microwave. <laughs> so, really? Yeah, they okay. eat it. <laughs> okay. Well, so. there you go. Hot time in the old town tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, river cruises, uh, they they hope by spring to be up to about 40% capacity. Uh, Uniworld, which is one of our favorites, we, we really love that uh, cruise line, says that uh, they're going to have all of its ships back by the end of March. That's, I think, pretty optimistic. The, pr- the problem we're having with river cruises in Europe, and it's part of my three-legged stool when I talk about the three impediments to return to cruising, the first one being the CDC, which we've highlighted many times. That's the biggest impediment. The second one is the ports of call. The third being the traveling public and its attitude towards getting on a boat. This river cruising in Europe has been affected by European ports starting and then unstarting, closing down, mass vaccine. Anyway, they go back and forth. So We talked on my show just yesterday that Europe is starting to say, the yeah. Rhone is done, and we're going to open up. No more restrictions, none of this. And and there are. It, it seems like country after country, they're falling that way right now. That's what we did with Delta, and they started then Omicron, and then all of a sudden they shut down again. And so, so they keep changing their mind. Exactly, and that's the problem we're having with river cruises. So you get everybody all hyped up. You have to cancel, give everybody their money back. The nightmare of accounting starts all over again. Uh, the future cruise credits. Anyway, that's that's welcome to our world. So we we hope to be back uh, with Europe, European river cruises uh, starting in March and April. One of the things to keep in mind right now, if you're thinking about a river cruise, is the airfares to Europe are very, very good because there's not a lot of demand for Americans going over there. So the other thing that's going to be happening with airfares to Europe is they're going to have to maintain their landing slots. And they get so many slots, and these are dictated by the European Union, the EU, and if, whether they have passengers or not, they have to fly the planes to keep the slots open. So we're seeing low demand, a lot of capacity going on uh, with trips to Europe. So this is some of the best airfares I've seen to Europe in a long time. So you could get the whole airline crew taking care of you on oh, the yeah, flight. There was like an article cruise, last week. Right? There was this Australian kid. He was the only guy on a 747. I did see that. Wasn't yeah. that something? Whoa, man, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> they probably had to pour him off the airplane. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> uh, by the way, you're on board with Just Cruising, brought to you by Cruise Holidays of Vieira, our website. Great things on that website. It has uh, reviews of all the different cruise lines so that you can kind of compare and see which one is the one you like. It has uh, our podcast cast on there which are available to you 24 7 and we invite you to go there and right in the middle of the page you'll see the podcast it also has our exclusive escorted uh, cruises that we'll be taking as the year goes along and you can get all the information about that on our website it has ways to contact us really all you need to know about planning your next cruise is our phone number 321 242 
1331. Just give us a call. Lady called me this morning and said, hey, I want to do this, this, and this. And uh, that's all she had to do. The rest will be history, and she'll be packing her bags and going on a cruise. You mentioned the escorted cruise, and I've been on cruises where you guys have escorted us. And being a rookie cruiser, you walk on, and there's so much going on on the ship. You don't know where to go, what to do. Having you guys around is, is a good thing. Thank I, I you, I like Bill. that idea. And before you get on the cruise. Okay, we're coming to another port of call, so please stand by, and we'll be right back. Anchors up. Here's your host, Larry Jackson. And welcome back. So glad you could let us be a part of your Saturday afternoon. Hope you're having a good one. Well, let's let's take a look into the future. Um, a fellow once told me when I worked at a financial services organization that everybody's eminently qualified to talk about the future because nobody has any earthly idea what's going to happen. No expertise, so you can be the expert. Uh, there you go. So we're, I'm going to look at some cruise trends that are going to be happening uh, in 2022 and the first one is the touchless experiences that we're seeing on ships and these were created by the pandemic when we thought that the virus was transmitted by touching um and we you know people were having their groceries delivered and having the guys put them on the front porch and move away from them and then they they Zapped them. Let them sit out there for three hours. Three yeah, hours, yeah. yeah. And then they... Crazy. Anyway, so since we thought that was what was going to happen with cruising, we created a, a bunch of uh, touchless innovations that go along with uh, going on the cruise. And these are... This is a big plus from what happened with the... Because it is greatly expedited getting on and off a ship. And I'm There all, were positives that came out of how we that, reacted yeah, to this. Yeah. yeah Business this, and otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Now, the plexiglass shields everywhere are not one of them. <laughs> but what are they going to do with all that plexiglass when, when this thing settles down? I don't down? know. <laughs> create anyway. create uh, cones of silence, maybe. <laughs> oh, I like For that. game shows or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so... So I'll tell you about uh, what's what's it like to go on a cruise now with the touchless um, innovations that we have. And I'll use the cruise we're, we're going on, on Celebrity Reflection. So what happened was a, a few weeks ago, we downloaded Celebrity's app. Uh, we uploaded our passports. We uploaded our vaccine cards. We up We went and took a picture of ourselves and uploaded that on the app. Now, those are all things that you would normally hand to somebody when you check in at the terminal. Now, the only thing, then we had to have a COVID test within two days of going on the cruise. So on Thursday morning, we went and got our, our COVID test. We got negative results, which is to be expected since both of us have had COVID. I would hope that they would be negative, but one never knows with these or tests. Or positive since you had it, but who knows? <laughs> yeah, I know. you got to be careful when you yeah. get the test because if it's too close to when you had it, it's going to come out positive. But anyway, so we got the test. We're going to take that to the pier with us. And we uploaded all those things on the app. Now, when we get to the pier, all they're going to do is uh, look at our phone and see that we've uploaded those things. Our key cards are already printed. They're going to be in our stateroom, so we don't have to stand there and wait for somebody. We don't have to fill out. Oh, the other thing that's going to ha that happens is 24 hours hours prior to boarding the cruise, we fill out a health questionnaire to tell them we don't have any symptoms or anything. Now, that's something else you used to do at the pier. You'd have to, and I jammed everything up. So now we just show them our phone. They said, very nice. And off you go to your stateroom and your key card is at the stateroom. So that, I mean, you're, you're on board the ship in three or four minutes and that, you, that could have taken 20 or 30 minutes. Before, Absolutely. Yeah. Plus the long line. And of course there's nobody on the ship. So there's no long lines. It's, it's really nice. And you walk right on the ship. Now, when we get off the ship, there's no custom forms. Uh, all we'll do is walk up to a bio machine that re does facial recognition from that picture we took and put on our phone. Okay. And then we walk, it turns green, and you walk through, pick up your luggage, and you go to the parking lot. So that's no your, making a list of the things you bought or nope, anything like nope. that? And counting up, you know, how much money did I spend? Did I, uh, oh, I got a story about that. You'll love this. Okay. You know how uh, Border Patrol is doing such a great job down in Texas to, uh, you know, keep folks out? Doing everything they're allowed to do. Well, in, in New Orleans, they're doing, they're working really hard because this last week, uh, they seized 509 prohibited aquatic items from a deparking, debarking cruise ship passenger. Now, what happened was this husband and wife were on a seven-day Western Caribbean cruise going to Montego Bay, Grand Cayman, and Cozumel. 
and the agricultural section was watching people pick up their luggage and something keyed that these people were obviously criminals. So they pulled them aside and they seized their 509 items of aquatic, uh, aquatic items. And what they were doing was when they were out at the beach combing, they picked up shells. Uh, and they, they weren't allowed to bring she- seashells. Well, no, you yeah. can bring seashells, but you uh-huh. can't bring 509, 509 oh, okay. of them. <laughs> Because that's where the CBP, somewhere in there between 1 and 509 is they draw the line of what you can bring in. So, <laughs> know the limits. Yeah. Now, it doesn't say if these people were put in solitary confinement like the folks at the oh Capitol on January 6th or what, or if they had to pay. It doesn't tell us what the, the outcome was other than they lost. And they were collecting them to for their art projects, another seditious um, uh, criminal endeavor going on here in the United States. So, And uh, because of that, there will be parents the night before the projects do <laughs> run into the pharmacy to get whatever they can get. Yeah, that's right. that uh, we, we were going to supposed to have seashells. But, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I want you to rest assured that the CBP is keeping you safe from aquatic items. Aquatic uh, and, and be items. careful on your next cruise how many shells you bring back from whatever island you're in. So. Good. That's great. That's funny. <laughs> okay. Again, you're on board Just Cruising, brought to you by Cruise Holidays of Vieira. Uh, we are a family-owned organization. The co-owner of Cruise Holidays of Vieira is my lovely and gracious wife, Linda. Um, a lot of folks say, uh, if you call Cruise Holidays of Year and Larry answers the phone, ask for Linda. So, um, and, uh, and <laughs> She's a sweetheart. I like Linda. <laughs> uh, what we do is we help people plan their vacations, uh, all kinds of vacations, cruising being the major ones we do, but not exclusively what we do. And we offer something that uh, you don't find very often anymore, and that's called retro service, and it's retro service because it dates back to service that used to occur back in the 60s and 50s when people actually people actually answered the phone you didn't have to press a button for english and uh the people actually returned phone calls people actually uh returned emails and in the case of cruises, if you're asking for a quote, we get those to you the same day. So I, I'm amazed at how many people tell me, well, I called this other travel agent and nobody ever called me back. I'm like, well, how, how do you stay in business yeah, if you do that? How do you do, do that? that? Yeah. And I'm amazed at uh, consumers that continue to do business with people that offer bad service. So uh, we try not to, for that, not that. No, we don't try. We make sure that doesn't happen at cruise holidays. Of year. Oh, there's no doubt. You know, you mentioned the retro stuff. In my mind, and, and I don't have any experience pre me being here, but cruises used to be like a very formal thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, people dressed up like going to church on Sunday. A yeah. uh, little different environment now, but there's still a formal element here and there. Not really. It's really? pretty much it, gone. It's all relaxed now? <laughs> but, but I used to travel with three tuxedo shirts. Really? And, and two tuxedos. And, of course, the last time I did, I walked in, and there's guys in their shorts and T-shirts, and I said, well, why am I doing this? But, no, we've relaxed the formal nights now. We're we're appealing more to families, more to multi-generational, so uh, you're not going to That's probably that. uh, a – I mean, you're going on a vacation to relax, right? Right. I'm not going on vacation to get stuffy and, and, yeah. and to have the big formal – you know, the formal dining room, that's a nice thing, and, and they do a great job of service. The food's always excellent. Right. But I don't want to be sitting there in a tux eating that food, right? No, no, you're right, yeah. Bill. And you know, I think it's a plus for the industry. It, 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 and I had so many guys going, I retired to Florida, so I wouldn't have to wear a tie anymore. Yeah. So, <laughs> there you go. And I'm not going on a cruise. Now, that's one of my favorite. My other one was, well, I used to cruise a lot. I go, oh, when? Well, when I was in the Navy in World War II, I said, well, it has changed a little bit. Just the, a touch. The, the chow line is a lot shorter than it used to be. One other thing. uh before we leave the touchless uh, environment that we've created on ships is the lifeboat drill uh, where we used to they would sound the horn everybody they would close all the bars everything would close down everybody had to go to their stateroom they had to put on this life vest that was very restrictive and god knows where it had been but helpful if you needed it that's true yeah okay you put all that on then you went over to the muster station out on the dock Mm -hmm. Uh, out on the deck and if you were unlucky you got the sunny side of the ship so you were standing there for 20 or 30 minutes in this thing that you can't breathe in uh while you're waiting for everybody else to show up because oh i didn't know we were supposed to go to the anyway now what we do is on that app i was talking about you watch a very short video you listen to the, the distress signal and uh the app records that you've viewed it 
it doesn't view, record that it's you, but it, let's regard disregard that. Then you go to the muster station, and a crew member looks at your phone, and they see that you've looked at the video, and then they put a little sticker on your key card or sometimes a wristband, and that tells them that you've done the muster drill. There's no waiting for elevators to get back to your cabin. The bars are not shut down. Everything's continued on. The crew members don't have to go all over the ship. It's really, really nice. Yeah, that that was a... Yeah, not painfully long, but it seemed like how long are we going to stand here before they let us all go? You know? Yeah, but then you had to get up to the stateroom, put right. up the, put away the life vest. Then you had to go back down. Nothing was True. open because all the crew members were out counting to make sure you had the right number of people for the uh, for the the muster drill. So that's been a big improvement. All right, one other thing to, that is going along with our touchless society, and this is something that a lot of people raise questions about and that's the buffet are we having buffets anymore we that's are, an important question larry i know it's uh, <laughs> the buffet is alive and well now the only difference is you can't reach in with your grubby hands and grab a, a muffin or a, a pile of scrambled eggs i've seen people do all you of know, this that's stuff probably not a bad idea it's a great idea <laughs> and so uh that the the crew will now serve you. You just tell them what you want. They'll give you the portions that you want, although they're not going to pile it on like you used to do so that you have a lot of wasted food. We have less wasted food. Uh-huh. We still have the norovirus out there, so we still have touch viruses that we have to uh, worry about. Another improvement that came from the panic pandemic. So. You know what? Not a bad way to go. There you go. You're making me hungry. <laughs> I got to quit talking about this stuff. Okay, we're coming up on our last port of call, so please join us on the other side. You know you want to take that cruise. Call the Cruise Holidays of Vieira office now at 321 242 1331 or toll free at 866 291 1331. Hi, welcome back. We're so glad you could be with us today. All right, let's let's do a few cruise tips. One of the questions we get asked about a lot is packing. Now, Linda Jackson has become a packing expert after 145 cruises. She's got this down to a science. Uh, she did something that she's never done in September. On We were on Silver Sea Cruises in Alaska, and all of their suites come with a butler, and the uh, butler said, would you like me to unpack for you? Now, Linda has never let anybody do this before, but this time she said, okay, go for it. And, really? And so the guy, she said, what do you want me to be here? And he says, look, I've been doing this for eight years. I think I can, I can uh, hack this. So, so we, we See, I'd be tempted to say, be sure you put the gun under the pillow. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't forget, it's got to be in the case unloaded. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We'll have to do a show on prohibitive items on board a That's cruise a good ship. Idea, that, that Larry. one's one. Yeah, uh, no chainsaws doubt. and fireworks is another one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so we we left the cabin and we're uh, not only on Silver Sea. You have a butler, but you also have a room steward. And so we're going down the hall, and here comes the room steward with this harried look on his face, carrying a whole bunch of coat hangers, uh, heading towards our stateroom. So I guess the butler did not anticipate. <laughs> what, what, but when you pack for Alaska, you got to have more things. That's true. So, so j- just a few tips that we've learned over the years of uh, packing. Uh, one of the things, you have a butler? Yeah. Is he like around your room all the time? It, you, he has a, a cell phone and you just call him and boom, he's standing at the door. Now, he was really good on Silver Sea because we had to have a temperature check every day. So we just call him and say, hey, we're ready for the for the temperature check. Now, some of the other things. You can't call him and say, how cold is it outside? Oh, you were you in can Alaska do that. after all, right? Yeah, you yeah. can do that. <laughs> okay. uh, one day, one of the things that we like to do in Alaska is that you cruise into a glacier and you spend about uh, two or three hours doing slow 360 so everybody gets to see the face of the, the uh, glacier. Okay. So we have a tradition that we like to sit on our balcony, view the the glacier with hot chocolate and Baileys. Okay. And so we asked our butler, said, we'll be in the glacier about 10 o'clock. Could we get a bottle of Bla- Baileys and uh, a, a thing of chocolate, hot chocolate or coffee? And boom, there it was sitting there when we got back to the cabin. So, very, very nice. Yeah. The butlers do all kinds of great things. You know, one day we ran out of champagne and he brought us champagne. It's, these are th- crucial things that you have to have on a cruise. Look, so. you're going, you're going for a good time. Go and enjoy it. That's <laughs> the name of that, right? 
Okay, one of the things that Linda does, and I think this is kind of unique, uh, if you're on a Caribbean cruise for us here in Florida and you're driving to the, the pier and you really don't, by the way, you have no limitation on the amount of luggage you can take on board a cruise. Really? Yeah, there's no weight limitation. There's no, uh, now the only thing is you got to be able to store the suitcases underneath your bed so you don't want to take more than will fit under a bed, which is usually about four to five. So what Linda does is she leaves uh, shirts, blouses, shorts, and things like that on the hangers when she packs, and then she just folds it in. And then when you get to the cabin, you open it up, you just take it right out and hang it up in the closet. So okay. that, that's, that's one of the little tricks that she does uh, as far as packing for a cruise. Now, if you're going to be flying to a cruise, one of the things that we do is because you cannot have liquids over three ounces in your carry-on, we use the two carry-ons that we get, one a piece, to basically put clothes and things that weigh, because they don't weigh those either, so they're heavy things that, that's not prohibited by the TSA. So we really fill those things up. That leaves okay. us more room on the checked luggage to be able to, to take things. And obviously we don't take the hangers on, on a uh, cruise where we're going to be flying because it just it takes up too much. And speaking of flying, if you're going to a destination that's, let's say, more than two or three hours flying time from where you live, we recommend you going in the day before. For our river cruises here in the United States, they offer a pre-cruise hotel that's part of the cruise fare. And going overseas, uh, we, if you're going to Amsterdam or to London or something like that, we recommend you fly in the day before. That way, if anything goes wrong during your uh, your trip, then you'll be able to recover and still get on the boat or on the ship in time. That makes sense. Yeah, so it, it works really well. Uh, again, this is one of the things that we do at Cruise Holiday. One of the many things that we do at Cruise Holidays of Air will help you plan your your air travel. Will help you plan your uh, hotels if you're. Pre or post will help you train how you're going to get to the hotel, how you're going to get to the ship, how you're going to get from the ship to the airport. And then we'll help you plan your uh, excursions also. So this is all part of the service at Cruise Holidays of Europe. Our, again, our phone number is 321-242-1331. Our website is just cruisingviera.com. And, oh, also on that website, not only do we have the podcast available for you, and our podcasts are available also on the iHeart application app. And that's free. Just go to to Google or uh, the Apple Store and download the iHeart app. Another thing that's on our website is the ability to sign up for our email list. Now, we don't inundate you with emails. We don't sell your uh, address, but we do uh, a lot of updates that we provide for you in news. Do especially. you occasionally get those special cruise offers that folks like to wait on? And, and, and do you email those? Is that, yeah, yeah, we, oh, we, we do cool. a, a few of those. But, yeah. you know, everybody tells me that they love last-minute cruises. And then I'll call them and say, hey, I got this cruise in three weeks. Oh, no, that's way to, I mean, I got to get a dog sitter. I got to, you know, we got to turn off the paper. And I'm, so I don't have a dog, Larry, just so you know. <laughs> I don't have a dog. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's just cruisingviera.com. All right, back to our tips uh, that we've collected over the years of cruising. And this one is very important now. And that's make copies of your documents and then print them and carry them someplace outside of your luggage. Make a copy of the photo page of your passport, make a copy of your vaccine card, make a copy of your boarding pass, all of these things, uh, have those in a paper format. Because we, for instance, we had to go to St. Martin. When we went to St. Martin, we had to show all of this at the airport. Well, St. Martin's kind of a third world country and their Wi-Fi went down. So nobody could show. <laughs> so all these people are standing in line because they can't show the documents that they needed. Uh, we recommend that when you're out on an excursion, especially in a foreign country, keep the copy of your passport in your wallet and uh, you can keep your passport in the in the uh, cabin in the safe but having that picture of the passport if anything goes wrong you lose it or it's stolen or anything like that then that that's very handy to do matter of fact at cruise holidays of year if you want and you'll stop by we'll make a copy for you of, of all those things and uh, then you'll have it with you uh just one quick reminder before we leave you our tunnel to towers cruise will be going to bermuda from port canaveral on the Mariner of the seas may 15th through may 23rd 2022 please call us for more information and to make a reservation for that the cabin is going to be 
right at $3,100 for two people in a balcony cabin. Well, we've really enjoyed being with you this Saturday afternoon. We hope you'll tune in next Saturday and join us again for Just Cruising. And until we see you again, keep on cruising. <laughs>